Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Frank Lovejoy, starring as Randy Stone, covering the night beat for the fictional Chicago Star newspaper. As we go back 72 years to February 20th, 1950, a world all his own. And we thank you for tuning in on this Sunday. This is the 20th day of February, 51st day of 2022, 314 days remaining in the year. Postal Service Act, establishing the post office, signed by President Washington in 1792. In 1873, the University of California opened its first medical school in San Francisco. The film The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse premiered on this date in 1921, starring Rudolph Valentino. American movie studio executives agreed to allow the Office of War Information to center movies during wartime in 1943. Uh, The film African Queen opened in New York City in 1952. Emmett Ashford became the first African-American umpire in organized baseball in 1952. And in 1962, while aboard Friendship 7, John Glenn orbited the Earth three times in four hours, 55 minutes, becoming the first American to orbit the Earth. Check pressurization. Rock stacking. You are go. Now, in 1998, while still a sitting U.S. senator, Glenn became the oldest person to fly in space as a crew of the Discovery Space Shuttle and the only person to fly in both the Mercury and Space Shuttle programs. Ranger 8 crashed into the moon on this date in 1965 after a successful mission of photographing possible landing sites for the Apollo astronauts. Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee voted on this date in 1974 to test the president's willingness to cooperate with its impeachment inquiry by asking the White House for specific items of Watergate evidence. Senator Walter Mondale speaks. It seems to me that the president must immediately produce all of the information so that we can see it all and decide uh, what must happen next. In 1987, in Salt Lake City, a bomb exploded in a computer store believed to be related to the Unabomber. Uh, Mariah Carey won two Grammy Awards on this date in 1991, and this is her reaction. I'm just really thankful, and (sighs) that's it. (laughs) Carey winning two Grammys, one for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance for Vision of Love, and one for Best New Artist. Ross Perot, on this date in 1992, announced his intention to run in the presidential election on Larry King Live. American figure skater Tara Lipinski became the youngest gold medalist at the 1998 Winter Olympics in Japan. A veteran FBI agent charged with spying on the U.S. for the Soviet Union and then for Russia for more than 15 years. Uh, Special Agent Robert Hansen, arraigned in Alexandria, Virginia, federal court, At FBI headquarters, FBI Director Louis Free delivered a scathing condemnation of Hansen. 
The criminal conduct alleged represents the most traitorous actions imaginable against the country governed by the rule of law. Hansen pled guilty to 15 counts of espionage. In district court, he was sentenced to 15 life terms without the possibility of parole. Passing away on this date in history, journalist Walter Winchell, actor Dick York, the first Darren from... No, he was... Dick York was the... He was Darren in uh, Bewitched. I don't remember which, whether he was first or second. Um, Gene Siskel passing away on this date. Actress Rosemary DeCamp, actress Sandra D. Journalist and author Hunter S. Thompson. Also sportscaster Kurt Gowdy and journalist Garrick Utley. This is the birth date of photographer Ansel Adams. Gail Gordon born on this date. You remember him from My Favorite Husband, Our Miss Brooks and the Lucy Show. Uh, John Charles Daly, broadcaster, newsman, for years, anchor, 17 years, uh, the television program What's My Line. Film director Robert Altman, also Sidney Portier, who passed away just earlier this year at the age of 94. Miss Kitty on Gunsmoke, Amanda Blake, born on this date. Uh, race car driver Bobby Unser, who passed away last year at the age of 87. From Hogan's Heroes and Rowan and Martin's Laughing, Larry Hobus, born on this date. Singer Nancy Wilson, Jerome Giles of the J. Giles Band, and Nirvana's Kurt Cobain, all born on this date in history. Birthday number 85 for race car driver Roger Penske. Singer Buffy St. Marie is 81. Uh, the pro wrestler in Japan who wrestled Muhammad Ali, Antonio Inoki, also a politician, 79 today. Singer actress Sandy Duncan, 76. Uh, Ivana Trump, 73 today. Patty Hearst, 68. Giles in Buffy, Anthony Head, also 68 today. The man behind Mystery Science Theater 3000, Joel Hodgson, 62. From Third Rock on the Sun, French Stewart, 58. Model Cindy Crawford is 56. Uh, she's married to Chef Robert Irvine. Great career as a wrestler and now working behind the scenes of Impact Wrestling. Gail Kim, 45 today. Uh, the uh, Daily Show's Trevor Noah is 38. Vampire Diaries' Daniela Pineda is 35. From the Divergent Series and Whiplash, Miles Teller, 35. Rihanna is 34 and soon to be mom. And uh, the lady who sang the song Driver's License, Olivia Rodrigo, is 19 today. And oh, we cannot forget to mention Valkus and his puppy Dorothy. Valkus, one of our listeners, turns 11 today. Those some of the people who celebrate the 20th day of February as their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday... Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say... Happy birthday to you! And from 72 years ago, February 20th, 1950, Frank Lovejoy starring in Nightbeat on this Sunday Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. You know, I've told you all how much my feet hurt from time to time, and I've also told you how much I enjoy getting to work because right here under my desk I have a pair of my slippers. Mike Lindell's new invention with patented fill, the my pillow fill that, you know, he works in the pillow so well, comfort memory foam, patented impact gel, and it has an indoor outdoor sole for all day use. Right now, they are uh, on sale. If you go to MyPillow.com, click on the Radio Listener Square, you will see my pillow slippers at 50% off, but only for a limited time. Plus, you'll get Mike's soft cover book, What Are the Odds, from Crack Addict to CEO. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the Radio Listener Square, use my promo code USA, or call one 800 951 8175. Use my promo code USA. Savings on overstock items to it. MyPillow.com. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, we start this Sunday off with Frank Lovejoy in Nightbeat from 72 years ago, February 20th, 1950. Night Beat. This is Randy Stone. 
I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. You know, stories start out in many different ways. Tonight's story started when I walked into a nice little guy's private world and it blew up right in my face. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. When the streetcars and the subways fill out their thousands of tired ones who scurry off into a million directions to find home, that's when my job begins. I start walking, looking for my story so that you can read about it in your morning newspaper and feel good because it didn't happen to you. Tonight I got my story fast, just walking down Madison Street, west, away from the center of things. I kept walking past the shooting gallery... The Nickel Arcade with the peep shows and the fortune-telling machines. The jukebox taverns. <laughs> Madison Street, the quick route to happiness with the world's worst hangover. And then straight ahead of me was Pop Gordon's training gym. That's where the public pays 30 cents to watch fellas training to beat each other's brains out. You know, when I got inside, it looked like just one of those fights. And then I heard one voice over the others. It was a voice I knew. Somebody call the cops and get that punchy loon out of here. You yelling stupid bums, all of you laughed at me. What's the matter, Pop? Me, Yeah. This crazy owl's gone clear off his rocker. Well, that's Billy. Yeah. Somebody call the cops. Wait a second, Pop. He's all right. Sure, sure. Listen to him. Anybody lays a glove on me gets killed. You'll Only one place for a loon like that in the bughouse. I'm going to get the cops and have this owl tied up. Oh, now, wait a minute, Pop. Let me uh, talk to him. Randy, stay away from that lot. Five of us couldn't hold him. He knows me. Randy, the guy's gone nuts. Yeah. I... Yeah, like I said, everybody's scared of getting the same. Hey, Billy. 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 What? Hi, Billy. How's it going? Uh, you coming in with me? No, sure, sure. Make me a big man getting into the same ring with a champ. Well, that's me, champ. And you're a two-bit bum. Well, that's a thumbnail description if I ever heard one. Admit it. The truth. A two-bit bum. Admit it. I admit it. I admit it, Billy. Yeah, but you don't mean it. You're laughing at me like the rest of them. You're laughing at me. Billy, I never laughed at you in my life. You're laughing? Well, I'll show you what happens to anybody who laughs at Billy the Kid. <laughs> As the world flew away in all directions, I dimly remembered how the sports writers used to speak so respectfully of Billy's fast left hand. But brother, if they knew what I just found out about his right. When the fog finally cleared, Pop Gordon was bending over me, and there were a lot of other faces, too. But I didn't see Billy when I stood up. You okay, Randy? Oh, this is being okay. I don't want any part of it. He slugs you, but good. Where is he? I took off before the cops come. Took off before anybody could grab him. I don't blame him. Uh, I let that bum come in the gym and sit around. Everybody else pays 30 cents, but him, I let him free. What's he do, huh? What's he do? He busts loose, he blows his top. But why? What happened to Billy? Oh, I don't know. Tonight, I catch him putting a bite on my customers. Two bits here, a dime there. Billy was panhandling? Sure. Like I said... I didn't like it, so I tell him. And then what? I don't know. I'm over at the other side of the gym. I hear somebody laugh, and the next thing I know, the owl's swinging like a windmill. He's going to kill everybody just for being around. He ought to be tied up. Uh Uh-huh, just like that, huh? Yeah, he ain't safe. What do you want, the black Mariah to come around, cart him away like a load of rubbish? Yeah, but for his own good. Oh, Pop. Yeah. Remember when he was champ? He packed him in every club where he fought. He had a dollar or five dollars for anybody who held out a hand. So? What are you getting at? Well, now he's got no one, Pop, and now he's out in the cold. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll forget the cops. But we still got to put him away. Well, all right, sure, but let's do it as painless as possible. I'll, uh, I'll keep him with me tonight, and then tomorrow... We'll... You going after him? Yeah, which way'd he go? Uh, straight up the streets, but watch out, Randy. He blows his lid. Yeah, I know, don't worry. I don't want any rematch. I'd like to know why he blew his lid in the first place. And my jaw in the second place. I'd known Billy a long time. A sweet, gentle guy who always seemed to be living in a world all of his own. A world that nobody else knew about and cared less. And now he was in trouble. In his mood, he might hurt someone. Or worse, he might get himself hurt. I must have walked for half an hour before I finally spotted him. He was standing on a corner. I stopped and watched him for a couple of minutes... I watched his hesitant, embarrassed panhandling. And I walked over to him, slowly. 
Hello, Billy. What? Oh, hiya, hiya, Randy, old pal, old pal, hiya. You want some company? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> good, good. Randy, wh- where you been keeping yourself? I-, I ain't seen you for a couple of weeks. You haven't seen me for a couple of weeks? Well, I, I thought maybe you'd forget an old pal, huh? No, you're <laughs> not the kind of a fellow one forgets, champ. Mm-mm. Now, what was the uh, trouble back at the gym? Gym? Oh, what gym? Pop Gordon's. Pop's place? Yeah. Well, well let's go. I, I gotta help Pop. He, he's a good joe, you know. He never charges me nothing. Wait a minute, hold on a second, Billy. Hold on. Yeah? Weren't you at the gym tonight? Oh, no, not tonight. I, I've been here. And you didn't, uh, <laughs> massage my chin? You, you're giving me a rib. Well, what you looking at me for like that, Randy? Forget it, Billy. You, you was just ribbing, huh? Oh, sure, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I like ribs. I, not giving the hot foot nothing like that, but funny ribs that, that don't hurt nobody. Oh, sure. <laughs> can I ask you a $64 question? Well, sure not. You, you can ask me anything, Randy, anything. I saw you a minute ago, Billy. What? I never seen you ask for a touch before. All uh, right. I, I, I ain't never gonna do it no more, but... But, Randy, I, I got it tonight. I, I gotta get a few bucks. Maybe 15. I already got $2. Maybe... Why 15. do you need $15? What? I, I, I gotta get a new suit. A new suit? What's so special about tonight, Billy? What, that... that, that There's something I, I gotta do. It. I just gotta do it, Randy. I gotta have 15, but... Hey, them scars. Hey! Is that you, Randy? Yeah. Oh, Sullivan! Yeah. Randy... Don't let him pick me up for Panhandle, please. No, I won't, please Billy. Don't. Now, you wait here. Wait here. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hey, that's Billy back there, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, Sullivan. Why? Heard you had a little trouble with him back at the gym. Maybe we ought to put him in the tank for the night, keep him out of trouble, huh? Look, uh, look, Sullivan. Uh-huh. He's going away tomorrow for a long time. Oh, like that, huh? Yeah, that, that's it. This is his last night, huh? Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, good. That's the way I do it myself. I see you around, Randy, but keep an eye on him. Yeah, I'll watch him like a hawk. Thanks, Sullivan. So long. Uh, well, what they say, Randy? They, they ain't gonna pick me up for mooching, are they? They, they ain't gonna... No, no, no. Of course not. Uh, look, uh, Billy, how'd you like to come to my apartment for a while? Oh, I can't. I told you. I, I gotta get 15 bucks. Well, we'll talk about it. Well, I gotta get it tonight. Now, I gotta get a new soup because... Because... Yeah, go, go on. Why? I, I can't be wearing this crummy rag when when I see her. Not when when I see her. I didn't know what he meant. But whatever it made him go crazy at the gym, whatever it made him hit me was tied in with her. Who she was, I didn't know, and I wasn't sure that he knew. I finally talked him into going to my place and... When we went in, I watched that slow, gentle smile come over his face. Hey, this place is a number one. Yeah. Sit down, Billy. I ain't got much time. Just a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I, I'm awful tired, Randy. Seems like a lot of things has happened tonight, you know. I, I'm kind of tired. Sure. Want a drink, Billy? Oh, no. I, I, I never touch it, you know that. Yeah. And you never panhandled before. Well, I, I, I ain't gonna do that no more just tonight. I, I never bummed off of nobody. I paid my own way. Come anything, I, I paid my own way. Yeah, that's why I want to know why you're putting the bite on people tonight. I ain't gonna tell you. You, you. you laugh. I won't laugh. You will. So somebody else laughed when I told you. Some, somebody laughed and... Well, when, when somebody laughs at me, I, I don't like it. All I right, easy, you, I, easy, buddy. I, easy, easy. I, Come on. Uh, that's better. I tell you, I, I got to get 15 bucks. Hey, hey, look, look, look at this. What's that, Billy? I, I cut it out of the paper today. I, I seen it. Hey, you take a look at it, huh? You'll read what it All says. Right. Mrs. Walter Compton and her husband... Yeah? Yeah, go on, that's more. Prominent society leaders of New York will be in town tonight. They're staying at the lake shore and... I can't go there in this crummy rag. Well, why do you have to see her? What? Well, I, I got to tell her something, man. Hey, this is getting late, Randy. I, I gotta get... I'll lend you the $15, Billy. You? Oh, no. No, I pay my own way. Well, pay it back whenever you get a job. No, I don't want any handouts. It's just a loan, Billy. It's a loan. What? <laughs> uh, thanks, Randy. You, you're a champ. Now, now, tell me why you gotta see her. You, you ain't gonna laugh? 
I, I can take anything but that, anything. I won't laugh, Billy. No, I, I, I guess you wouldn't. Okay. You, you remember once I was champ? Oh, huh? everybody knows you were champ. Now, what about her, Mrs. Comfort? Yeah. Well, it's one night after a fight, see? I ain't champ yet, but I'm punching right up to the top, see? Okay, but this one fight, she ain't there. So I go to see her at her place. She's there. She's there. And so when I... Who's that? It's me, Billy. Where are you? Yeah, out in a minute. Sure. Hey, I win tonight. I said I win tonight, didn't I? Yeah, I heard on the radio. Well? Well, what? It don't mean a thing? Sure. Means a lot, I guess. You guess. <laughs> a kid for a dollar who's going to marry the next middleweight champ, you sure take things like a lump of ice. Yeah. Edna, anything wrong? Nope. Oh, there is. Okay, something's wrong. Have it your way. <laughs> you, you, you wasn't at the fight tonight, baby. I, I looked for you. It took me three, four rounds to get going because I didn't see you. You won. Oh, kid, look at me. Sure. This doesn't sound good. February 20th, 1950. Nightbeat here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. And the news from 72 years ago today follows these important words from your favorite radio station. No offense, but are you a little fat when you look in the mirror? How would you like to learn the secrets to lose three to five pounds a week easily without joining the gym or going through any crazy diets? It's called Body Sculpt by Med Diet. For the last two decades, we've been helping people just like you that have pounds they want to shed. We've helped millions of people lose thousands and thousands of pounds over the years. And now it's your turn. Learn the secrets of how to lose weight with one simple phone call. You'll see an amazing difference in a matter of days. Don't believe us. We'll offer you a money-back guarantee. If you're ready to start losing weight right now, Call right now to learn more about your risk free order to Body Sculpt. Call for your risk free offer. 800 738 5332. 800 738 5332. 800 738 5332. That's 800 738 5332. And you're listening to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. An episode of Night Beat starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. As it was originally broadcast on Monday, February 20th, 1950. In the newspapers of that Monday 72 years ago, these were some of the headlines. Embittered rank and file coal miners yesterday flatly rejected John L. Lewis's official order to end their economy wrecking strike. Their decision to hold out left the next move squarely up to the government, with coal stocks down to a near crisis level. Steel mills, auto plants, and cities throughout the country ordered emergency measures to save fuel. In New York City, the Great White Way dimmed out last night for the third time since the war. A poll of local United Mine Workers leaders showed the men mad as hell and determined not to dig coal until a contract is signed with the major producers. Operators conceded the pickings will be slim when they open their minds for work today. With its ranks split wide over proposals for an atomic showdown with Russia, the administration yesterday reached the edge of a new crisis in its relations with the Eastern European Communist bloc. John M. Hightower, writing for Associated Press, reports, barring some unexpected developments, the U.S. is due to break relations with communist satellite Bulgaria in the immediate future. The Bulgarians first notified of the U.S. stand four weeks ago. Last Thursday, the State Department called for an immediate response to its threat that relations would be broken unless Sofia dropped its demands for the recall of American Minister Donald Heath on charges of spying and plotting this government called the charges false. Authoritative allied sources told Richard S. Weil for the International News Service it has learned Russia started building a hydrogen bomb last September and the Soviets are confident they will be able to test it successfully by this summer. The sources said the information that Russia had a four-month head start on the U.S. in construction of the most deadly weapon known to man was gleaned from allied intelligence reports. 
Reports of German scientists who have helped escape Russia helped round out the Soviet H-bomb picture. Congressman Fred L. Crawford, the Republican of Michigan, shared a county jail cell with a drunken driver and eight other assorted prisoners yesterday because he objects in principle to Maryland's bail-fixing practices. A quiet-spoken 62-year-old congressman arrested Saturday on an assault warrant sworn out by uh, Ray Hanbury, husky 23-year-old ex-boxer who's been working in Crawford's office to help pay his own way through law school. Hanbury charged Crawford struck him during a quarrel on the congressman's 260-acre farm in Prince George's County, Maryland. The slightly built bespeckled lawmaker readily admitted he slapped the younger man. And though some of the day's top news stories is reported in newspapers of Monday, February 20th, 1950, on your radio, Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater. The eye got torn open again, huh? Oh, oh, that's nothing. Collodion fixed it. Collodion fixes everything, huh? Get caught up, use collodion. That's nice. That puts you all together again. How long do you think you'll stay together? What's eating on you, honey? The last two, three weeks. The last two, three weeks. The last two, three years. Yeah, that's right. I hate it. You hate what? Oh, shut up. Oh, kid, kid, what's wrong? You and me. Oh, I don't get it. The only thing you do get is a measly few bucks for getting your head knocked off. Oh, I'm a fighter, So honey. you're a fighter. All right, fight. But count me out. Oh, now, wait a I've minute. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for him to carry you home. Me? <laughs> me? It can't happen, huh? Well, all of a sudden, you start blowing your top. It's not all of a sudden. You said it. You said there was something wrong for the last two or three years. Okay. Okay, spill it. I'm through, Billy. Washed up. Finished. What? You and me. Done. Since when? Since right now. (laughs) Oh, baby, it's just the eye. You see me this way and you... (laughs) The eye. (laughs) Don't laugh at me, Edna. Don't laugh at me. I take anything but being laughed at. It is a laugh. Oh, now listen, You listen, honey. I don't care if you get punched all over the state. I don't care if you get your brains rattled so hard. It's me I care about from now on. Okay. So I'll be champ. So so you'll get your fur coat. Not from you. you. Not from a guy who's beginning to look like a punching bag instead of a man. Look at me. Take a good look. I am. Yeah, I am. I got looks. I got class. I can do all right. I still don't get it. All right, I'll lay it on the line for you. Want me to? (laughs) Go ahead. I'm not going to tie myself to a punchy character. I'm not going to have to walk in nice places with a guy whose face is... is, Well, look at her. Go on, take a look in the mirror. You see what I mean? You want me to quit? I don't care if you do or not, because it's too late, Billy. It's too late. Uh, Edna, you you shouldn't say things. (laughs) Please, Edna. That's the way it was, Randy. That, that's the way it was. Yeah, I see. Look, Billy, you don't want to go and see her after that. I, I tell you, Randy, I, I got to see her. There's something I got to tell her. and It's got to be tonight because tomorrow she, she'll be gone. Billy, how do you know that she'll... Well, that she'll see you? Oh, I know. I know because there's something I, I ain't told you. There's something, something I ain't never going to tell nobody. And... Uh, uh, Randy, please, please, don't don't try to stop me. Please don't let nobody try to stop me because because if if they do, I'll, I'll kill them. You are listening to Nightbeat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. And yeah, the boxer is William Conrad from February 20th, 1950, Night Beat on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you in bad pain? You know what I mean. Your knees hurt. Your shoulder hurts. Your elbow and back are constantly killing you. And I'm sure you've tried every pain pill or cream available at the drugstore. Am I right? Well, here's something you haven't tried. Pain magic. Pain Magic is not available at any drugstore. 
The only place you can get it is by calling the special toll-free number I'm about to give you. And to make things even better, call right now and find out about our buy one, get one free offer. We're so confident it'll work for you that we offer a free bottle with your purchase. No prescription required. Call now to learn how you can get pain magic and get rid of your pain. Remember, your results may vary. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. That's 800-492-8164. We head back 72 years on Monday's Classic Radio Theater, an episode of The Adventures of Philip Marlowe, starring Gerald Moore, The Ladies' Night. Ladies' Night in the Turkish, ba- Turkish Bath leads Marlowe to murder and blackmail. That's on Monday's Classic Radio Theater, but now the conclusion of Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, from uh, 72 years ago, February 20th, 1950. <laughs> Billy said he'd kill anybody who tried to stop him from seeing Mrs. Walter Compton. I looked at his scarred face and into his eyes. A wild fever you see in the eyes of a dog everyone says is mad, but only wants a drink of water. And then? Uh, I guess I, I shouldn't have said that, Randy. Well, let's forget it for a minute, Billy. Now, tell me, why do you want to see her? <laughs> you don't understand dames, huh? <laughs> no, my mother never told me. Well, well... She gives me the brush, see, like I tell you. She, she gives me the brush, but, but she does it for me, see? She, she don't want me to get my brains knocked out, see? Yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to see, Billy. Sure. But me, I got no sense, so, so I don't see it her way. So I, I, I let her walk out, and I don't see her no more. Not until I get hold of that paper today. And tonight you want to see her? To say what, Billy? Well, but don't you see? She loves me. All these years, she, she never lets up, and I... I I, I want to tell her it's okay, that maybe her and me, we can start all over like, see? Uh, what's the matter, Randy? Nothing. Nothing, Billy. Look, don't let anybody kid you, pal. You're still champion. Oh, I ain't nothing. But, uh, oh, I, I gotta go now. I, I gotta get 15 bucks for a Now, second. look, look, you're tired. You need a shave. Maybe take a shower. You thought of that? No. All right, now you wait here and take a shower and a shave, and I'll bring a suit back for you. Is that a deal? Oh, gee, you, you're a champ, Randy, you're a real champ. I might be gone for a little while, Billy, but when I come back, everything will be okay. Sure. Okay. There was only one thing for me to do, go and see Mrs. Walter Compton. I made sure that Billy couldn't leave my apartment. I locked the door from the outside. I didn't want him picked up before he had the chance to see her. To see the woman around whom he'd built a whole world of fantasy in which he'd lived for so many years. I didn't want that world to come down around his ears. My newspaper pass got me in to see Mrs. Walter Compton in her suite at the Lakeshore. You're Mr. Stone? Yes, I am, Mrs. Compton. You're from the newspaper? Well, I'm not on newspaper business, uh, Mrs. Compton. Not tonight. This is more personal. Really? Well, what can I, um... Uh, do for me? Uh, nothing. Then please get to the point, Mr. Stone. My husband will be here shortly with guests. How soon? An hour. Why? Well, uh, because it concerns someone you used to know. Really? Who? Billy Candell. Billy Candell? Yes, he was better known as Billy the Kid, once middleweight champion of the world. Oh, I'd forgotten. <laughs> and I was glad to. Uh, Mrs. Compton, he's coming here tonight to see you. What? He's coming. <laughs> How stupid can you get? Well, for a lot of people, it's not hard to be stupid or uh, heartless. Yours must be a rather sentimental column, Mr. Stone. Uh, yes, it's about people. you better go. Look, uh, please see, Billy, what can you lose? It's out of the question. Listen, all he wants is to tell you something. He wants to tell you that... that he knows that you still love him. What? Oh, no. Oh, now listen to me, please. Now, tomorrow he's going to... Well, he's going where he can rest. He's sick, Mrs. Compton. He's desperately sick. Let's not be so polite. The word is punch drunk, I believe. You want me to see a lunatic? No, he's not. And I'll be here when he comes. We'll keep it between us three. Do you know what you're asking? Yes, I'm asking you to give a guy a few minutes of his world. Make it real for him. Tell him anything. Tell him you still love him. Then he'll go away. After tomorrow, you'll never see him or hear from him again. You're asking me to receive that... that thing to bring him into this hotel where everyone can see him? 
You know what that means? Well, to him, yes. I'm talking about myself. Myself, Mr. Stone. Yes, I'd like to get off that subject for a it's moment. It's the only subject that matters. If you don't see him, he'll crack up all the way. That happened long ago. Good evening, Mr. Stone. Three minutes of your time. I said no. Did you hear, Mr. Stone? I said no. Okay, lady, I'm going. Uh, thank you for everything that's been lovely. You needn't be sarcastic, Mr. Stone. Oh, needn't I be? Look, Queenie, I got a little spot announcement for you. Billy owes you a vote of thanks. You'll never know it, but you gave him the biggest break of his life when you walked out on him years ago. Oh, really? Yes, positively. Tonight you're giving him even a bigger break. <laughs> tell me about it, Mr. Stone. Yes, I'll tell you. <laughs> the only thing that poor guy's got left is his memory of a girl named Edna. Any resemblance between that memory and you is strictly coincidental. Goodbye. I was glad to get out into the fresh air. All the way back to my apartment, I kept thinking of what I'd tell Billy. How I'd tell him. Then as I walked across the lobby toward the elevator... Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone! Uh, oh, what is it, Charlie? Here's a message for you. Okay. You are, Mr. Stone. Thank you. How long ago he leave this? Oh, what, just a few minutes after you left. <laughs> did you know you left him locked in? He called down. He asked me to open the yeah, door. Yeah, did he say where he was uh, going? No, no, no. Just that he couldn't wait for you any longer. Oh, that is on the note. How'd he look? How'd he look? Well, I mean, anything unusual about him? No, I... He had on one of your suits, I remember now, that, that pinstripe one. He must have stolen it. No, right he didn't steal anything. Now, listen to me. Uh, I'm going to the Lakeshore Hotel. If he comes back here, get in touch with me there. Mrs. Compton Sweet. Mrs. Compton Sweet, yes. Oh, and listen, I think you'd better call the police. But as for Kalski, remember that Kalski? Kalski. Tell him to meet me at the Lakeshore Hotel and quick. I took a cab and I took the shortest way to the Lakeshore. I watched the pavements looking for Billy, but I didn't see him. He had some money on him and he must have taken a cab himself. And then I was back at the lakeshore talking with a clerk at the desk there. Yes, sir, there was a, a man here of that description. He asked that a call be put through to Mrs. Compton, sweet. And was it? Well, sir, he, he was a rather... Well, yes, yes, I, I know, I know. So he didn't get through. Oh, I called Mrs. Compton, sweet, myself and told her. That is, I described the man. I... Yes, go ahead. What'd she say? That on no account was I to put him through or send him upstairs. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, that's something. What'd he do then? He left immediately. Which way? Oh, I'm afraid I didn't notice, sir. I was registering some new guests, and I paid no attention. Okay, thank you very much. I had to find Billy before... Well, before what? What would he do? Where would he go? I asked myself those questions as I walked slowly along, watching for him, hoping to see that pathetic figure in my pinstripe suit, hoping I'd get to him before someone else stopped him. I was afraid of what might happen or could happen. And then I saw him. Just past the Lakeshore Hotel, shambling slowly along, his shoulders hunched against the wind that cut in off the lake. I ran and caught up with him. Billy! Billy! What? Oh, uh, hi, Randy. Hi. W what you doing over here? Oh, I just, uh, looking around. Why'd you leave my apartment? What? Oh, well, well, you was gone so long and I had to get going, see? Oh, sure. Come on, let's walk. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I borrowed one of your suits at, uh... It's a, a real champ suit, all right. You mind, huh? You mind? No, no, Billy, none at all. Did you see her? Oh, oh, sure. What, you did? Yeah, I, I see her. Billy, they wouldn't let you go up, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, but, but, uh, I, I went up the back. The back, Billy. Now look at me. Are you sure? Oh, sure. And, and, and she still loves me, Randy. I, I said everything was okay. She's crazy about me like, like she always was. What did she tell you? Well, well... She she didn't want to talk to me. You know how she is. But then I told her I love her, and, and she loves me. Yeah? Uh, Billy? Uh, Billy? I'm tired, Randy. Lots of things happened tonight. And lots of things. Yeah, I know. What do you say we go someplace for coffee? Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. <laughs> I'm awful tired. And uh, when I get real rested good, I'll go back to see her. Her and me, we'll, we'll start over again. Hey, hey, this is where she lives, you know? Yeah. Look, I, I, I got to see her once more, Randy. Maybe she'll talk to me this time. Uh, Not tonight anymore, Billy. Uh, but I, I want her to talk to me. Well, I don't... She will. Yeah, she will. She loves me. Billy, now listen to me. You let me go up there first. I'll talk to her and fix everything, okay? What? Tell her not to act like a kid. Tell her to talk to me. Yes, sure, sure. I'll tell her, but you must... Hey, 
Hey, Stone? Yes, Kolke? You put in a call for us? Oh, yes, I did. It's okay now. I found him. What you call the cops for, Randy? Oh, Kolsky's not a cop. He's a pal of yours. Huh? He thinks you're the greatest fighter that ever lived. He always wanted to talk to you about your big fight. Oh, sure, sure. But but we're busy now. I, I'll talk to you about it later, Kolsky. I gotta see somebody. Billy, I promised you I'd see her, remember? Yeah. You... You're gonna tell her I'll be waiting? Sure, sure. Now, you just stay with Kolsky here. Tell him uh, about the night you won the belt. Anything the matter, Stone? No, no, no. Just keep him here. I'll answer questions later. Now, Billy. Yeah? Promise me you'll stay right here. You, you won't stay long, huh? J- just tell her she loves me and, and and I want her to talk to me. Sure, I will. Okay, now you wait here. I didn't think it would do any good to see her again, but I wanted to give Billy a good memory to take along. I saw her all right, but she didn't talk to me either. I went back downstairs and out to the street. I hadn't been gone more than five minutes, but they were the longest five minutes of my life. Brother, I was beat. Hey, hey, Rhonda, you see her, huh? You see her? Yeah, I saw her, Billy. What did she say? Huh? You tell me what she said. Huh? Well, I told her. Hey, Stone, how long does this go on? This is a prowl car, not a bus. Yeah, we're coming along with you. Yeah, what's the idea? Get in the back, Billy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tired. I, I'd kind of like to ride to your place, Randy. Sure. Take us to the precinct, Kalski. Listen, Randy, did you see his girl? Yes, I saw her, but she didn't talk to me either. I guess she laughed once too often. She's dead. Huh? All right, now just take it easy, Kalski. The poor guy doesn't even know that he killed her. Lights are going out all over the city. Even those neon signs on Madison Street. I've got to write my piece and put it in a slot. But what can I say? The story of a one-sided love? Well, if that's what love does to you, I'll stick to Pinochle. It's a funny thing about love, isn't it? Let someone get up and talk about hate, and he's hailed as a new leader. Let him speak of love, and he's ridiculed, he's spat upon, and even nailed to a cross. Love is the greatest thing, the oldest yet the latest thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Copy, boy. Night Beat, a new dramatic series, stars Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Tonight's story was written by Russell Hughes. Night Beat is edited by Larry Marcus and directed by Warren Lewis. Music by Frank Worth. The part of the prize fighter was played by Bill Conrad. Others in tonight's cast were Lorreen Tuttle, Bill Lally, Larry Dobkin, and Leo Cleary. Frank Lovejoy will next be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Rock Bottom, released by Warner Brothers. From 72 years ago, February 20th, 1950, Night Beat, here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Please do me a favor, and by the way, happy birthday, Valkus. Give the puppy a pet for me, please. Uh, Please take a moment to thank this radio station and support their advertisers. It is their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be with you each and every time we roll through here. Uh, Also, please do me a favor. Visit my webpage, classicradio.stream. All sorts of great classic radio theater information, contacts, how you can get in touch with us through social media, or you can contact us directly. Also at Classic Radio Theater, Classic Radio dot stream, I should say, you can uh, hear our shows on demand, along with hearing them on demand at iHeartRadio or Spotify or Spreaker. Tune in, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, Audible, uh, Google Podcast. All you have to do is search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's why I keep saying it's not that I'm egotistical. How else are you going to find us if you don't know that you've got to search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox? There are imitators out there, and make sure you search for the authentic one if you catch my drift. Have yourself a great day. Please tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater on your favorite radio station.